Okay, folks, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you guys how the Hornady 366 Auto Progressive Reloader works. This is a reloader that's set up specifically for shotgun shells. Um, the reloader is set up to, sh um, to load shot. In my case, I like uh, loading number seven and a half shot. But for today, I'm just going to show you guys how to do a uh, Lyman 525 grain Sabo slug. I'm going to be using a Lyman 525 uh, grain Sabo slug. I'm going to be using Remington Premier STS 2 and 3 quarter inch uh, hulls. I'm going to be using uh, Winchester uh, 209. Is it 209? Yep, Winchester 209 primers. And I'm going to be using Winchester uh, WAA 12 F114 wads. And that's actually the wad to use for um, the lineman slug here. A little bit about the progressive reloader. Uh, I've seen a lot of video websites that they show reloaders, but I have yet to seen, or yet to seen, I have yet to see a Hornady 366 auto progressive reloader in action, which is why I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and be one of the first ones to do it. Uh, I'm going to be loading one shot shell at a time. Uh, unlike the Dylan presses, on these uh, shot shell reloader, every time you pull the handle, everything goes up. Everything is done in the upward movement. For these progressive reloaders, everything is done in the upward movement. Depriming, resizing, uh, priming, uh, setting the primer, I mean everything, the powder, setting the shot, everything. So one of the things also that uh, is a little bit different with this reloader is unlike the Dillons, uh, if you load a pistol or um, rifle, every time you go up, the shell actually hits something and it drops the powder. On this one, every time it goes up and it comes down, powder gets dropped whether there's something there or not. So I'm going to be showing you how as soon as the shell gets loaded with the powder and then moves on to the next stage, there's not going to be another shell behind it. So the powder is going to have to be shut off. If I were to be reloading and using shot, it'd be exactly the same thing. If there was not another shell behind it, I would have to shut off the shot. Otherwise, every time you pull the handle, bump, something will get dumped. All right, so uh, let's get started and I'll walk you through it. Uh, this first step over here, or this first stage, it's actually going to be the deprimer and it's going to be the resizer. Um, on this case, it resizes the brass on the bottom over here. Some of the brass have uh, low walls, some of the brass or some of the, the hulls have low walls, some of the hulls have tall walls. These low ones don't really need to be resized, but I'm going to do it just for the sake of doing it. Um, well, let's get a, another shell here. There's a new shell with the spent primer in it. All right, so. It's going to get resized and it's going to get deprimed. Then I'm going to put it in here. It's going to get deprimed again just because I'm doing this one just to show you guys. Uh, as it gets pulled up, you're going to notice that a primer is going to drop inside this little hole right here. Once it gets resized and the primer drops in the hole, there must be a primer in that hole. You're going to, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when I start uh, moving. The primer will get dropped into the little pocket there. The shell will get moved over it and then it gets primed and what's going to happen is it's going to get it from the top and from the bottom as I pull the lever it's going to go boom and actually squishes from the top and bottom the next phase over here is going to be the powder then we're going to be inserting the wad which is over here in this stage over here is where I'm actually going to be setting the slug the slug um, I usually use a pair of needle nose pliers once it's inside the wad I will actually press it in right dead center and it should sit right there. So that's how it should look like once the wad is inside the hull and once the slug is inside the wad. That's as deep as it wants to go. Sometimes they're going to be like this, they're going to be a little difficult, but you'll feel it'll just slide in. Puck! And that's the distance that you want it. So it's going to be here where I'm going to be setting the slug, which is usually where the shot is gets uh, put into it, but I'm not going to be using shot. The next phase over here is going to be where it starts to crimp. This specific um, hull here uses an eight-fold crimp, which is what we're going to be using for this Lyman 525 grain slug. There's other ones that have six folds, and I'm not sure if they have smaller ones in that. They might have three or something, but I'm not really sure. But I, knew, I do know that they have an eight, and they have a six-fold. So at the station here, they're going to be putting in the six-fold crimp. It's going to get started. This one over here, the crimp is going to be completed. Then on the very last stage over here, the crimp is actually going to get rolled on the top. And it's going to get a nice professional looking look. 
actually this is one of the reloaders that makes a really nice fold over here you're gonna see them uh, but -ba -ba I think that's about it oh one more thing too as the uh, rolls or the crimps are getting started what you need to make sure is or just to consider is that you're folding plastic so unlike uh, loading pistol or rifle we just pump it crank it pump it crank it pump it crank it take your time when you're doing the fold I usually hold it for about a half second to a second so it gets a nice little you know uh, fold or crease on it then I rotate it onto the next phase and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second alright so let's get started we're going to be using this one here so this is going to be the first station and we're going to deprime it as well as size it so now I put it in there it's going to get deprimed again but it doesn't need to All right. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to manually dump a primer now I'm going to be doing one at a time so I'm only going to dump one primer in there um, you're going to hear the primer actually go down the tube and you can hear it go click in a second ah, okay so the next pull it pushes down every single time that this thing goes up and then it comes back down I have to see a primer there you have to see a primer there now you're going to see the primer going to start rotating here and the primer is now getting dumped into a little pocket and as it keeps on going the shell is now in place so the next step the next pull is going to actually seat the primer there the next phase over here is going to be the powder. I'm going to turn the powder on now. The next pull is going to load the powder. Okay, there's nothing here. I need to turn off the powder. If I do not turn off the powder, the next pull is going to dump powder all over the place. I'm going to put the wad in here now. The next pull is going to seat the wad. okay something else I want to mention here I don't know if you guys could see this or not but there's actually a PSI little scale over here and I could set it and then this one over here on the Hornet it goes up to 90 I don't know if you'll ever get anything up to uh, not, uh, bleh, up to 90 but usually between uh, 20 and 40 PSI is fine I have mine set up at like 25 to 30 PSI so that's the pressure that is actually pushing on the wad seating it up against the powder okay this is the next stage this stage right here would be where you actually set the shot but in my case I'm gonna put the slug in there manually I'm gonna dump it in there press it in I'm gonna get the needle nose priors right in the center and I'm gonna press it just like I showed you earlier it's seated all the way as I pull it it's gonna go up but it's not gonna do anything because it's actually the stage where the shot gets loaded okay I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm going to move the light around to the back here. Oops. It's kind of bad lighting there. And let's see. Okay, the next pull is actually going to start the crimp. I'm going to try to go a little slow here so you guys can see it. Can you see that there? Let me see if I could zoom in on it. The crimp is actually getting started right there. It's going to rotate to the next one. Here you're going to see the crimp getting finished. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit so you guys can see that. Alrighty. And in the next stage, it's going to get a nice little roll. And let me move the light again. I'm going to try to catch it here before it comes out and falls into the hole here. And there you go. It has a completed shot shell. A uh, little sloppy, it's uh, opened up on the top. It's going to actually affect the pressure a little bit um, because it doesn't have a tight crimp but I'm not too worried about it as it's going to be a sable slug. If I had a uh, shot in there 
then yeah, every time you turn it around, shot would be falling out. But in this case, it's all right, it's acceptable. Uh, there you go, primed. And a completed shot. So that's about it. Those are the step-by-step -step, uh, stages of this Hornady uh, 366 progressive reloading uh, press. And, uh, and the next phase, what I'll do is I'll show you guys how I do it uh, progressively. And I'll load up about another 15 of them that I have left over. So that's the press.